What up my dudes, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be teaching you how to make a delicious Instant Pot Butter Chicken. While it might not be 100% authentic, it's great in a pinch. But before we get started, if you can like, comment, and subscribe, it really helps out the channel. Without further ado, let's get going. So here are the ingredients you're going to need for this recipe, starting with our spice mix, which is garam masala, cumin, smoked paprika, turmeric, cashmere powder, and salt. You can always replace the cashmere powder with cayenne. We're going to be using one cup of heavy cream that we're going to set out as we start, one red onion, three to five cloves of garlic, and a two inch knob of ginger, finely ground. I know that seems like a lot, but don't worry, you're barely going to taste it. We're also going to be using 15 ounces of tomato sauce. Uh, I'm using hot tomato sauce for extra spice, but you can just use regular if you're not a spice fan. Uh, we're going to be using three tablespoons of ghee. If you do not have ghee, which is clarified butter, you can just use regular butter. It'll work perfectly fine for this recipe. We're also going to have about a quarter cup of water for deglazing later. And go ahead and open up those cans of tomato sauce for later. It's going to save you a lot of trouble. We're going to get some dry fun Greek leaves for garnish. You can also use mint, cilantro, parsley, coriander. And then we're going to have about two pounds of chicken thighs that we've cut into one inch cubes. Please use thighs for this. It's going to be the best cut of meat for this. So go ahead and toss three tablespoons of that ghee into your Instant Pot and turn it on saute mode. Uh, we just want to get this like nice and melted, if it's not melted already. And it should look like this. Once your ghee or butter looks like this, go ahead and toss in those onions, garlic, and ginger we had from earlier. <laughs> and make sure you use a paper plate to make it extra frustrating. We're just going to go ahead and uh, get these a little stir and a little saute about two to three minutes at most. We just want them to turn lightly translucent. We're not going for a full saute on this. We just want to kind of get the aroma going, just get it going. So we're going to need, uh, I do recommend red onions for this, not white. It will come out better, but you can use white in a pinch. Now go ahead and take that spice mixture. We're going to go ahead and add this. And we're going to toast this for about a minute or two until it becomes fragrant and it starts to smell heavenly in your kitchen. You'll know when. And then go ahead and turn off the saute mode at this point. Take your water. It should be kind of sticking to the bottom at this point. We're just going to deglaze with the water real quick. You can also use a little bit of chicken broth if you want to. Uh, I'm just using water. It doesn't really matter at this point. After all, this is supposed to be a shortcut recipe. So it does not be too fancy. Oh man, look at all that steam. And we're just going to scrape out the bottom because we do want on these little bits. Those are going to be a lot of flavor. If you want bonus points, you can saute your chicken and actually get it brown on each side before you do these steps. But that's okay if you don't. Go ahead and add one of those cans or half of your 15 ounce can of tomato sauce. Stir it up, get everything nice and well combined. And then once we have everything nice and well combined, we're going to go ahead and add our chicken in here. Like I said, you could have browned this beforehand to add extra flavor, but if, if you're... Uh, in a pinch or you're just feeling lazy, this is fine too. Go ahead and mix everything together and then pour in that last can of tomato sauce or the other half of tomato sauce, depending on what you're using. You can probably use whole canned tomatoes for this. I have not tried it personally, but I'm sure it will work. Uh, probably about the same measurement, maybe 20 ounce can. Now go ahead and put this on pressure cook for six minutes on high. It has to be on high for six minutes. And this is gonna go ahead and cook off that chicken real quick. Now at the end of your six minute cook time, go ahead and let this uh, rest for 10 minutes and grab yourself a bowl for serving and a spider strainer for our next step. And we're going to use the same bowl for serving as we are for our next step. And what we're going to do is we're going to release that pressure from this pressure cooker, making sure to not burn our fingers. <laughs> I then go ahead and look inside make sure to steam up your camera. So at this point, you can add the cream and just call it done, but we're going to take it the extra step and we're going to fish out all of our chicken and sift back all the onions and everything else back in there, hence why we're using the spider strainer. And we're just going to add it to that bowl that we set aside earlier. What this is going to do is get all of this chicken out of the way that we don't want to puree because we are going to puree our sauce using an uh, immersion blender or just a regular blender for this. Uh, again, this is 100% optional. If you just want to add the cream at this point and you like it chunky, that's fine. But if you want that restaurant smoothness 
and you want it to look picturesque. I do think it is worth the extra little bit of time to go ahead and do this. To go ahead and fish out your chicken, go ahead and grab that immersion blender, or you can toss this into a regular blender, either way it works. And we're just going to go ahead and blend for about maybe a minute to two minutes. It really does not take that much time, or should not take that much time. And then once everything is nice and well combined, we're going to go ahead and grab that cream that we had sitting aside the whole time. And the reason we want it kind of warm is so it doesn't instantly curdle when we pour it in here. Let's go ahead and pour it in here and set that thing to the side. And go ahead and bring that immersion blender back in here and just get it all nice and combined nice and well. It should look kind of like a soupy broth at this point and be kind of thin. That's fine. And then we're going to go ahead and add our chicken back in with some dried fun Greek leaves. This is going to add a lot of flavor. Uh, honestly, you if you like it runnier, you don't have to do this next step I'm going to do. But I'm actually going to mix everything together, and then I am going to turn saute mode back on, and we're going to bring this to a simmer. And we're going to do this so we're going to actually thicken up our butter chicken. So do this until you get your desired thickness for your butter chicken. And I made some gluten-free naan, by the way. Uh, I will link that recipe one day and post it. I'm still playing around with it, trying to get it perfect. So once you got it to your desired thickness, go ahead and pull this out. And we're going to go ahead and pour our butter chicken into our serving bowl, making sure we block the camera as we do so. Real nice, Marshall. <laughs> but yeah, we're going to pour this into the pot. Uh, go ahead and spread it out. Throw that pot in the sink. I'm going to go ahead and garnish it with some more dried fun Greek leaves. You can use mint, cilantro, parsley, coriander leaves, whatever you want. And then I'm going to touch it up and just make it look nice for serving because i got to make pictures. If you don't have to make pictures, skip this step. Do whatever. Maybe take some pictures. Stunt on people. Show it off on the gram. Now grab that leftover uh, heavy cream that was in the bottom of this thing. And we're going to drizzle this on top. That's going to give it that uh, restaurant-esque finish. I'm telling you this really adds a nice little extra layer. And then that's done. Look how beautiful this thing is. Now let's go ahead and get ourselves a taste test, shall we? Okay. Me and the wife are starving, so I'm going to make this really quick. Got myself a little bite of that, of the gluten-free naan, some rice, and that butter chicken. Mmm. That's so good. Mm-hmm. So tender, flavorful. <sighs> Just like the restaurant. And don't worry, I'll show that gluten-free naan recipe one day, soon. And there you have it guys, a delicious butter chicken recipe that you can make in your Instant Pot within like 30-40 minutes. It's a game changer a weeknight. Anyway, if you like, comment, and subscribe, it really helps me out. And as always, toodles.